starting from von Neumann's uh, self-replicating automata that you mentioned, it's just a beautiful idea. So that's at the heart of all of this. In the stack I described, so one student, Will Langford, made these micro robots out of little parts that then were using for Miana's bigger robots up through this hierarchy. And it's really realizing this idea of the self-reproducing automata. So von Neumann, when I complained about the von Neumann architecture, mm -hmm. It's not fair to von Neumann because he never claimed it as his architecture. He really wrote about it in this one fairly dreadful memo that led to all sorts of lawsuits and fights and about the early days of computing. He did beautiful work on reliable computation and unreliable devices. And towards the end of his life, what he studied was how, and I have to say this precisely, how a computation communicates its own construction. Yeah, so, so beautiful. So a computation can store a description of how to build itself. But now there's a really hard problem, which is how if you have that in your mind, how do you transfer it and wake up a thing that then can contain it? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you give birth to a thing that knows how to make itself? Mm -hmm. And so um, with Stan Ulam, he invented cellular automata as a way to simulate these. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that was theoretical. Um, now the work I'm describing in my lab is is fundamentally how to realize it, how to re um, realize self-reproducing uh, automata. And so, you know, this is something von Neumann thought very deeply and very beautiful, of, beautifully about theoretically. And it's right at this intersection. It it's not communication or computation or fabrication. It's right at this intersection where communication and computation meets fabrication. Now, the reason self-reproducing automata intellectually is so important, because this is the foundation of life. This is really just understanding the essence of how to life. And in effect, we're trying to create life in non-living material. The reason it's so important technologically is because that's how you scale capacity. That's how you can make an elephant from a ribosome because mm -hmm. the uh, uh, assemblers make assemblers. So simple building blocks yeah. that inside themselves contain the information how to build more building blocks right. and so, uh, between each other construct arbitrarily complex objects. Right, now let me give you the numbers. So let me relate this to, right now we're living in AI mania explosion time. Let me relate that to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. A hundred petaflop computer, which is a current generation uh, supercomputer, uh, not quite the biggest ones, uh, does 10 to the 17 ops per second. Um, your brain does 10 to the 17 ops per second. It has about 10 to the 15 synapses and they run at about a hundred hertz. So as of a year or two ago, the, compu the performance of a big computer matched a brain. So you could view AI as a breakthrough, but the real story is um, within about a year or two ago, and let's see, that, that the supercomputer has about 10 to the 15 transistors in the processors, 10 to the 15 transistors in the memory, which is the synapses in your brain. So the real breakthrough was the computers match the computational capacity of a brain, and so we'd be sort of derelict if they couldn't do about the same thing. But now the reason I'm mentioning that is the chip fab making the supercomputer is placing about 10 to the 10 transistors a second. Mm -hmm. um, while you're digesting your lunch right now, you're, make, you're placing about 10 to the 18 parts per second. Mm -hmm. um, there's an eight order of magnitude difference not so in computational capacity, it's done. We've caught up, but there's eight orders of magnitude difference in the rate at which biology can build versus state of the art manufacturing can build, and that distinction is what we're talking about. That distinction is not analog, but this deep sense of digital fabrication of embodying codes in construction. So a description doesn't describe a thing, but the, the description becomes the thing. 